good morning my dear students welcome to our today's zoology class i hope you all studied the last class question answers and in the last class we have completed three five mark question three important five mark questions menstrual cycle spermatogenesis and oogenesis okay so the menstrual cycle meaning it is a cyclic changes takes place inside the female reproductive system once in 28 or 29 days is called menstrual cycle and the second question we studied about the spermatogenesis here spermatogenesis meaning the process of formation of sperm inside the seminiferous tubule of the testis is called spermatogenesis okay then the next one is oogenesis the process of formation of ovum or egg inside the ovary of the female reproductive system is called oogenesis so these three question answers already we have completed in the last class okay i hope you all studied these question answers okay today we are going to study about another one topic okay so today's topic is fertilization and implantation fertilization and implantation here fertilization meaning the fusion of the simple definition of the word fertilization is the fusion of both male and female gamete male gamete is called sperm and the female gamete is called ovum so the fusion of these two gametes is called fertilization okay then the previous classes already i explained you the male sex cell is called sperm it is in haploid condition and the female sex cell is called ovum or egg it is also in haploid condition so the fusion or joining of haploid egg cell and haploid sperm cell is called fertilization so at the end of the fertilization process a diploid zygote is formed so at the end of the fertilization process from two haploid sex cells one diploid zygote is formed so this process is called fertilization this process is called fertilization the next one implantation implantation meaning the process of fixing a fertilized egg or the zygote inside the wall of the uterus or in the wall of the uterus is called implantation so the process of fixing the zygote in the wall of the uterus is called implantation so first we are going to study about this fertilization and implantation so i already told you the definition of the word fertilization now listen very carefully see this is the male sex cell sperm sperm this is the ovum or egg okay so this is the structure of female reproductive system ovary and uterus this egg cell is developed from the or produced by this ovary and the sperm cell is produced from the seminiferous tubule of the male reproductive system so now the egg cell produced by this ovary and the sperm cell produced by the seminiferous tubule of the male reproductive system is joining to form a diploid zygote okay so maximum these two cells this egg cell and the sperm cells these two cells are joining in the fallopian tube already in the last class we studied about the structure of fallopian tube also okay so this region the funnel shaped structure this region is called infant fallopian this region is called ampulla and this region is called isthmus okay so infant fallopian infant fallopian ampulla isthmus okay so these are the three parts of the fallopian tube okay this is the fallopian tube so this egg cell and the sperm cell both cells are joining in the junction of ampulla and isthmus so just imagine this this region is called isthmus and this region is called ampulla region so the egg cell is moving from the ovary and staying in this region okay in the region means the junction of both ampulla and isthmus at the same time through the vagina the male sex cells also entering in the in this region the junction of this junction region understand so in this junction only this egg cell and the sperm cell both cells are joining and the fertilization process is takes place understand and one important condition for the successful fertilization process both egg cells and the sperm cell both of, both cells are simultaneously they should reach the this region this uh, reaches this region 
Understand? So then only the both the egg cells and the sperm cell both can join togetherly and it, it can it, it can it can be converted into what? Cyport, deep what? Cyport. Understand my students, students? So I hope you understand the meaning of the word fertilization. Understand? And maximum the fertilization processes takes place and the junction of both ambula and isthmus of the fallopian tube. Both junction of ambula and the isthmus region of the fallopian tube. Understand? Understand if you? Now, <coughs> listen very carefully. See, this sperm cell should enter inside the egg cell. That means the nucleus of the sperm cell should enter inside the nucleus, sorry, inside the cytoplasm of the egg cell. Then only the this, these egg cells can be fertilized. These egg cells can be fertilized. So, to enter inside this egg cell, the sperm's acrosome playing a very important role because already in the last class, previous classes, we have studied the structure of this egg cell. The egg cell is covered with three membranes. The inner membrane is called veterinary membrane, middle membrane is called sonar peristola, and the outer layer is called the corona radiator. So, the egg cell of the human being is covered with three membranes, veterinary membrane, sonar peristola, and corona radiator. So, three layers are there. Okay, then the outer surface of these layers, this corona radiator, many small follicle cells also present. Many small follicle cells also present. So, these follicle cells are jointed. Okay, jointed or held together by an acid. Name of this acid is called hyaluronic acid. Name of this acid is called a hyaluronic acid. So, all the follicle cells present the outer side of the ovum or egg is held together or attached together by a acid is called a hyaluronic acid. And in the previous class I told you that in the hip region, the tip region of the sperm cell, this part is called acrosome. This acrosome region consists of one enzyme, hyaluronidase enzyme. Here the acid name is called hyaluronic acid. And the enzyme present in the acrosome is called a hyaluronidase enzyme. Okay, so when this sperm cell is reaching these follicle cells of the egg cell, immediately the hyaluronidase enzyme is released in the follicular cells. Okay, listen very carefully. When this sperm cell reaching the follicular cells of the ovum or egg, immediately the acrosome region of the sperm is facing the hyaluronidase enzyme. This enzyme disintegrate these follicle cells. Disintegrate this follicle cell. So, the sperm cell can easily enter inside the egg. And immediately the sperm cell releasing their nucleus inside the egg cell. Now the egg cell is in diploid condition too. Yeah, already haploid number is there. Here also haploid, both haploid are joined together. Now the egg is fertilized here. The fertilized egg is in diploid condition. I hope you all understood all these points. So for the effective fertilization, the nucleus of the sperm cell should enter inside the cytoplasm of the egg cell. Okay, then the egg cell is protected or covered by three membrane, vitellin membrane, sonar peristola and corona radiator. Then the outer surface, some follicular cells also there, follicle cells also there. And all these follicle cells are held together or attached together by one acid is called hyaluronic acid. So this hyaluronic, these follicle cells should be separated or disintegrated. Okay, so for this purpose, the sperm's acrosome releasing on enzyme, it is called hyaluronidase enzyme. This enzyme disintegrates the follicle cells and finally, the sperm is entering inside the egg cell. Now, the nucleus is released inside the egg cell. So, immediately, the egg cell is converted into a fertilized egg. It has deployed number of chromosomes, 2N chromosomes. Deployed means 46 chromosomes. Understand? So, I hope you all understand this point, understood this point. Understand? Then, listen. So, all these processes are take place in the junction of ambula and isthmus. The junction of ambula and isthmus. Now, just, so just imagine it's a fertilized egg. So, okay, this is a fertilized egg. This fertilized egg 
is involved in one process name of that process is called cleavage that means by the process of cleavage the single zygote or fertilized egg is divided into two cells now it is called plastron yes okay now it is called it plastron yes then four then eight eight into 16 okay 16 into 32 like that the number of cells is increased the egg cell the fertilized egg cell or the zygote is divided in their number Zygote is divided in their number. So now each cells are called plastom. Yes, each cells are called plastom. Yes, listen very carefully. So after the fertilization process is over, the zygote is involved in the cleavage process. Finally, the zygote is divided into many cells. First two cells, then two into four, four eight, sixteen, thirty-two. Like that, the cells number is increased. Okay. Now these cells are called plastom. Yes. Now these cells are called a plastrom yes. Understand? So now this plastrom yes, this stage is called more loss stage. Okay. So within 72 hours, this single zygote is divided into 16 or more than 16 plastrom yes. 16 or more than 16 cells. Single diploid zygote is divided into 16 or more than 16 cells within 72 hours. Within 72 hours. So now this condition is called Morla. Sorry, now this stage is called Morla. Now this stage is called Morla. So listen very carefully. At the cleavage process is started when the both cells are joining togetherly. Okay, so immediately after the joining of both the egg cell and sperm cell, immediately the zygote is formed. The zygote is divided into two cells, then four cells, then eight to sixteen. Like that, the so cell number is increased. Okay, so within seventy-two hours, within seventy-two hours, sixteen or more than sixteen cells are formed in the zygote. Now this stage is called morula. Now this stage is called morula. Okay, so now this Morla stage is moving from this fallopian tube and finally it is fixed in the wall of the uterus. This process is called implantation. This process is called implantation. So fertilization is takes place in the fallopian tube. After the fallopian tube, the fertilized egg, that means the Morla stage structure is moving from the fallopian tube to the uterus and it is fixing or it is attached to the wall of the uterus. This process is called implantation. This process is called implantation. Understand? Understand my dear students? So now we completed how the fertilization process is takes place where this fertilization process is takes place and what happening after the fertilization process okay finally what happened now the fertilized ovum sorry fertilized, fertilized ovum is reaching or fixed in the wall of the uterus understand understand a few then when it is reached this uterus fixed in the uterus wall of the uterus region immediately it is converted into another or it is changed into another word structure another word structure name of that structure is called plastocyst name of the structure is called plastocyst so just imagine the plastocyst so this plastocyst stage is present in this region okay so here the plastocyst is a hollow ball like structure okay and it is made up of more than 100 cells it is made up of more than 100 cells and two types of cells are present in the plastocyst the outer side a single layer cells are present these cells are called tropoplast okay so the outer side of the plastocyst has consists of a single layer of cells these cells are called tropoplast then the inner side 20 to 30 small cells are there these cells are called inner cell mass these cells are called inner cell mass these cells are called inner cell mass the embryo 
or the baby or the uterus sorry the, the fetus is developed from this inner cell mass okay so the baby or the embryo is developed from the inner cell mass region of the blastocyst understand first for the development of fetus first this inner cell mass is divided into two one is epiplast and the second one is called hypoplast so this from this inner cell mass only the three gem layers are developed first gem layers in the long standard you have studied ectodom endodom and mesodom these three are the gem layers so from the inner cell mass first the three gem layers are developed then after that from the gem layers so all the organs are developed so first the inner cell mass is divided into two epiplast and hypoplast the cells of this epiplast region is converted into ectoderm and the cells of this hypoplast region is converted into endoderm the cells present between this epiplast and hypoplast is converted into mesoderm listen very carefully the blastocyst consists of more than 100 cells and there are two types of cells are present in the blastocyst the outer layer is called trophoplast and it's a single layer cell and the inner side 20 to 30 small cells are there they are called inner cell mass from this inner cell mass only the three gem layers are developing and after few days from the three gem layers all the organs are developing okay so first the inner cell mass is divided into two epiplast and hypoplast epiplast cells are converted into epiplast region is converted into ectoderm and hypoplast region is converted into endoderm then the cells present between these two these epiplast and hypoplast is converted into mesoderm understand understand all of you my dear students so now we completed one important section okay so this blastocyst structure of blastocyst is a very important three mark question okay then listen so already i told you maximum this fertilization process is takes place in the where inside this junction of in this junction region of ampulla and isthmus after that the fertilized worm is reaching the uterus region for implantation okay so the pregnancy is takes place inside the uterus only the baby or the fetus is developing inside the uterus region of the female reproductive system but in some case okay but in some case this fertilization process is takes place outside this uterus okay the pregnancy is maintaining outside the uterus so this type of pregnancy is called ectopic pregnancy this type of pregnancy is called a ectopic pregnancy understand my dear students maximum this ectopic pregnancy takes place inside the fallopian tube okay maximum the ectopic pregnancy takes place inside the fallopian normally the pregnancy is maintaining inside the uterus endometrium region of the uterus but in some female because of some reason the pregnancy is maintaining the fallopian tube so this condition is called ectopic pregnancy okay 95% of the ectopic pregnancy is takes place in the fallopian tube it is very danger okay because it leads to bleeding internal bleeding okay if ectopic pregnancy takes place inside the fallopian tube sometimes the fallopian tube can rupture okay or break down so it leads to death also it leads to death also understand so ectopic pregnancy is very very dangerous to both fetus and also to the mother understand understand all of you so now we completed one important uh, section in this fertilization and implantation understand my dear students okay now we are going to study about next sorry i forgot to say one more uh, uh, two more question very important two more question clear see already i told you the sperm is entering inside the egg and the fertilization process is takes place isn't it see once the once a sperm is entered inside this inside this egg immediately 
the cortical granules present inside the egg developing a new membrane developing a new membrane this membrane is called fertilization membrane this membrane is called fertilization membrane the use of this fertilization membrane is this membrane only prevent the entry of other sperms inside normally only one sperm only should enter inside the egg for fertilization purpose okay so we after the entering of one sperm inside the egg immediately the cytoplasm producing a membrane this membrane is called fertilization membrane this fertilization membrane prevent the entry of other sperms okay so it avoid the polysperming polysperm meaning entering of more sperm inside a single leg is called polysperm understand so for what is the use of fertilization membrane fertilization membrane is used to prevent the entry of many sperm inside a single egg or single ovum is, uh, is, is a function of fertilization membrane understand all of you understand then next we are going to study about the extra embryonic membranes okay so it's a very important two mark question is in very carefully c extra embryonic membrane okay embryo means the fetus or the baby developing inside the uterus is called is called what a embryo understand so this when the baby or the fetus is developing inside this uterus the baby is protected by four membranes okay there are four membranes are protecting the baby from the external shock from the injuries understand the first membrane so just imagine this is a uterus okay this is a uterus so this just imagine is a baby so there are four membranes are present all these membranes are together called extra embryonic membranes all these membranes are together called extra embryonic membranes the innermost membrane is called amnion innermost membrane is called amnion so amnion membrane protecting the baby from the shock from the injuries and this membrane only regulate the heat body temperature of the baby okay then inside this amniotic amnion one fluid is there this fluid name is called amniotic fluid inside this fluid inside this amniotic fluid only the baby is moving or the fetus is moving okay so this amniotic fluid act as a biopsy biopsy means it is a medium used for floating purpose so the baby is floating inside the amniotic fluid understand so i'll say to repeat all the points about this amnion amnion is a innermost membrane or innermost layer is a double layer membrane okay double layer membrane it's a translucent membrane and protecting the baby from the injuries and from the shock and this membrane only regulate the temperature of the fetus and inside this amnion membrane one fluid is there it is called amniotic fluid this amniotic fluid is act as a biopsy that means inside this fluid only the baby is moving or the fetus is moving understand this now if you the next membrane is called yolk sac the second membrane is called yolk sac this yolk sac is the part of the gut part of the gut here gut means intestine okay and this region this yolk sac is act as a earliest reservoir of blood cells and blood vessels when the baby is developing the beginning stage the blood cells blood vessels everything are present in the yolk sac that's all about this yolk sac the next membrane is called allantois the third membrane is called allantois okay so allantois is the part of urinary bladder this membrane is the part of urinary bladder and this membrane or this layer is the basic structure for umbilical cord okay basic structure for umbilical cord here umbilical cord means it's a very small tube like structure connecting the fetus with the placenta this long tube like structure is called placenta at the end of this region is called what region umbilical cord region. okay so this umbilical cord region is developed from the allantois Layer. and the last layer is called forion 
okay it is outermost layer orion is the outermost layer this layer only protecting all the other three layers because this amnion yolks are carried as these three layers are present inside the orion layer understand of you understand then one more structure is there is called orionic pili that means the anterior region of this layer of this layers a small finger like projections are there they are called orionic pili they are called orionic pili this orionic pili consists of more amount of fetus blood more amount of fetus blood and this orionic pili is, is also covered with a long tube like structure it is called cynosis the cynosis consists of mother's blood understand so orionic pili is a small finger like projection it consists of the blood of the fetus and near this orionic pili Filling one tube-like structure, cynosis also there. The cynosis is filled with the mother's blood. Understand, my dear students? So now we completed one important two mark question. Sometimes the structure may be asked for, sorry, this diagram may be asked for three mark question. Okay. So the two mark question is what are the uh, four membranes, four extra embryonic membranes? Like that only they will ask the question. What are the four extra embryonic membrane? The first membrane is called amnion. Second one is called yolksa. Third one is called allantois, and the fourth one is called orion. Okay. So inside the amnion membrane only the fluid is present. The fluid name is called amniotic fluid. This amniotic fluid performing more doing many functions. Okay. Protecting the baby from the injuries. Okay. From the shock. It regulate the temperature of the um, fetus. Okay. Like that many functions. Understand? Understand a few. So now we completed one important two mark question. Okay, the question is what are the four extra embryonic membrane? Understand? Then now Already we studied about the GM days. There are three GM days: ectodom, endodom, and mesodom. Okay, so these three are the important GM cells. Only three GM cells only. Okay, in all the vertebrate organs, particularly in human human beings, three GM days is only there. One is ectodom, mesodom, and endodom. Okay, so listen. What are the organs developed from these? Three gem layers. Now we are going to study about the what are the organs developed from which uh, gem layers. Okay, so the first one is ectodom, central nervous system, peripheral nervous system, epidermis. Epidermis means the outer surface layer of the skin is called epidermis. Okay, okay, central nervous system, peripheral nervous system, epidermis, mammary gland, milk producing gland. So all these organs are evolved from the ectodom, first gem layer. Okay, this is a very important three mark question. Next, mesoderm. The middle gem layer is called mesoderm. This mesoderm develop cartilages. Cartilages means soft bones. Bones present in the ear. Bones present in the tip of the nose. So these bones are example for the cartilage. So cartilage bones, ordinary bones, muscles, kidney, ureter, gonads. Gonads means sex organs. So, okay, testis and ovary. Male gonad is called testis and the female gonad is called ovary. So these organs are developed from the second or the middle gem layer mesoderm and the next gem layer is called endoderm okay from the endoderm some cells and organs are developed see first one epithelium of the digestive system respiratory system okay our digestive system the respiratory system both the systems consist different types of epithelial tissue okay so all these epithelial tissues are developed from the endoderm then liver pancreas thyroid parathyroid here pancreas thyroid parathyroid these are the endocrine glands okay so all these endocrine glands and the epithelial tissues of the digestive system respiratory system everything are developed from the endoderm the same idea students so now we completed what are the organs developed from the three gem layers this is very important three mark question and one mark question also okay sometimes some one mark question may be also asked from this topic instead of you then
Well, the next topic is gestation period. Gestation period means pregnancy period is otherwise called gestation period. Okay, maximum 9 to 10 months. Okay, so total number of days pregnancy or the gestation period is 280 days. Within 280 days, a well-developed baby is ready to born from the uterus of the mother. So totally 280 days is the gestation period or pregnancy period. Then totally 40 weeks. All these 280 days are converted into for how many weeks? 40 weeks. Then all these 40 weeks are divided into three trimesters. Listen very carefully. Totally the pregnancy days are 280 days, 40 weeks and 9 months. Okay, 9 months. All these 9 months are considered as a 3 trimesters. First 3 months are considered as a first trimester. Then 4th, 5th, 6th. These 3 months are considered as a second trimester. Then 7th, 8th, 9th. These 3 months are considered as a third trimesters. Okay, okay. Listen very carefully. The first trimester, what are the organs are developing inside the fetus body? Then the second month, third, sorry, second trimester, third trimester. So, okay, first trimester. First trimester means first month, second month, and third month. So, during this first trimester, heart is developed. Limbs, both hands and legs. Lungs, liver, genital organ, reproductive organ. So, yeah, so all these organs are developed in the body of the fetus during the first trimester. That means first three months. Then the next three months, that means the second trimester, face is well developed. Then eyelid, eyelashes, hair, muscles, everything are developed during the second trimester. And during the third trimester, the baby or the fetus is fully developed and it is ready for birth. Okay, ready for birth. Understand a few? So, during this gestation period, many changes take place. That means many organs are developing in the body of the fetus one by one. Okay? So, all these organs are developed in the fetus during these three trimesters. After nine months, a well-developed baby is ready for birth. Understand a few? Understand? So, I hope you all understand this gestation period. Okay, here also many one more questions here. Suppose the liver is formed in which gestation? Okay, this is which uh, trimester? Or uh, the um, uh, lens is formed in which trimester? Like that, some one more question also may be asked. Understand, students? Understand a few? Then, next, hormones involved in the pregnancy. See, there are many hormones. The last topic, now we can complete. See, there are many hormones are involved in this pregnancy, in the maintaining of pregnancy in the female body. The first hormone is H. Human chorionic gonadotrophin. Okay. Then, human chorionic somatotrophin. Understand? Then, human placental lactogen. Estrogen, progesterone, progesterone, then cortisol, cortisol, then relaxin, thyroxin. Like that, many hormones are produced during the pregnant time. Okay, maximum this human gonadotrophin hormone, human placental lactogen, then relaxin. These three hormones are produced at the time of, at the last time of pregnancy. Understand? So remaining other times, these organ, these hormones also develop or produced in the body of the female. Understand? So all these hormones are playing a very important role in the maintenance of pregnancy. Understand, my students? So, okay, now we are completed. Many small two more questions and three more questions and one important diagram also. So, I hope you all uh, understood clearly. So, study well. Then, the next class, we will start the third chapter. Okay. So, listen and study very carefully and many two more questions and three more questions today I explained. 
okay and one diagram also the extra amniotic embryonic membranes okay so very important diagram also understand okay next class please thank you